Today's Captain's Blog is made possible through the support of Robert Lopez and dozens of other people just like you on Patreon. If you like what I do, if you're interested in this kind of thing, check out the links below in the description, and there's a ton of fun things to do and a million ways that you guys can get involved. Thank you for helping out. See ya! Hello guys, welcome back to the shop. Today we're doing a little bit of home remodeling. Ms. Moose has a shipping bench for all of her Etsy stuff, and we're remodeling the basement and making things better, and as part of that, she needs some outlets over the bench, and I have to do the electrical for this room. You'll notice it's dark, but if you get used to doing electrical work, you learn to do your best work in the dark. And I am a certified YouTube master electrician. So I'm going to take you step by step through how to install for serious outlets in your basement. And this is stuff that if you're a guy doing like basement workshop stuff, garage workshop stuff, this is really cool to know because most people, most of the videos on YouTube that teach you like how to install an outlet are all like Romex and plastic boxes and that shit and I fucking hate it. So what we're gonna do is run some actual conduit. We're gonna be playing with three quarter inch conduit and four by four boxes and everything's metal and we're running THHN, we're gonna run real wire, none of that shitty fucking, Ro I hate Romex, I hate Romex. So we're gonna do this for real proper industrial style here in the basement for Ms. Moose and make this happen. And I'm going to take you through the whole process step by step. I'm going to show you the tools that I use. Um, I'm going to show you all those materials I use, like everything, the whole soup to nuts process. So this is going to take me a long time, but you'll get to see it all edited down and be really quick. So let's install some outlets. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to hang our first box. Now, we're cheating like hell in this because... The first rule of picking a lock, try the window. Because if, if, like, I could set up my laser level and do all that, I don't have to here because I got really lucky. And when they poured the forms for the basement, I have nice square blocks. And these are level. I've used them in two other rooms in the house. I've checked them with a laser level. They're, they're decent. Um, they're like give or take over the run of a wall they're within like a quarter inch so they're really good for the and they're fine for this um and so we've got plum here we've got level here so we're just going to use the wall as a giant piece of graph paper full of reference lines because it's here don't do the work if you don't have to so we are however going to use our handy little level oh, i didn't show you this this is the little klein conduit level fucking love this thing um so when I set my boxes, and you will, you will develop your own habits, but when I set my boxes, uh, unless there's a reason not to, because there's a pattern to the holes on the outside, all of them will knock out for half inch, but only the ones with the second ring will knock out for three quarters. So I got one in the middle here, uh, one off to the one side here, in the middle, one to the other side, and so that's when you're running the boxes, you can run a three quarter high, or you can run a three quarters straight. Like, so it's high here. If you need it low, you flip the box around. But if it doesn't matter, like if I'm just doing a run and, and box orientation doesn't matter for something I'm doing, I like to put my ground in the top right corner. There is no reason for this. It's just like my OCD. So you put your level on top. Now we know our middle box is gonna line up right with this dot because I just, I took these lines and I was like, well, there's one at about that end and there's one at about that end, but in the middle I don't have a line, I have halfway between two lines. And this looks to be just about halfway between. Let's make sure. Our overall distance is two foot and we're at 12 and a half. So yeah, we'll move it a little bit to 12. So see, I thought the hole was right on. It's not, it's close though. And we'll just put a little line right there. So that's our halfway point. And you don't, like, where you put the boxes is rather arbitrary. There's some basic stuff in code for height of boxes and things like that. But beyond that, it's pretty arbitrary. I'm just gonna put a little box there. We're gonna hang our boxes just below. So we'll line that up to the middle, and we want to be just under the line. Now the line tells us where on the wall in gross Z axis we want to be. 
But the level is going to tell us where we want to be in roll so that the box hangs level. Because you don't hang the box with just one screw, you hang the box with two. If those fail, three, four, depends on if the tap cons snap off or if they strip out of the wall or if the wall crumbles or if you're attacked by pigeons or whatever the fuck. So that's why there's so many holes in here. So you have extra chances. So we'll line that up there and we'll make sure we're on the line. And then check your level like that. Now, I drew four circles. I'm only going to use two, but you draw four because if you fuck up, you're going to have to come back and use one. Now, for here, I got a big gungy pit here. I might be able to use that if I wanted, but I got this one's kind of close to a hole. If I try to drill that, the bit's going to flake out a bit. This one's free and clear. This one's free and clear. So I'm going to go for these two, and it doesn't matter which two. You don't, you don't have to be opposite. Um, I'm going to use these two. And if I have a problem, I'm going to come back and grab one of these second string holes, probably that one or that. But I'm going to start off with these two. So a drill hole is pretty easy, but you're going to need safety glasses. See, I didn't think of that when I set up. You didn't think, oh, oh shit, you need safety glasses. You need safety glasses. You might not think you do, but wear them. If you're using this tool, you're wearing safety glasses. Like that's... You've got hundreds of watts of power chiseling out tiny bits of concrete and it throws shit and it spits shit and there's dust and crap and gunge and shit and where are your fucking safety glasses? So on this, you draw, I, I always use a generic Sharpie and with a box you actually get a little ring, not a dot. So just aim for the center, support it. You don't have to like lean, we only got a 5 30 second bit so you're not leaning into this. This isn't a giant hilti. But just very gently start, have a really good, I'm all about gun control, so, you know, a two-handed grip. And then just very easily and you just ease in at the start. Don't just rah, because the shit's going to take off from hell to breakfast. Just ease in here, and i got to hold it kind of screwy because some asshole put the light there. But, yeah. Now, if you feel the bit start to bog down, pull out and clear your hole. If it starts slowing down or a sound changes or anything weird, pull out and clear your hole. Do not stop the bit in the hole. If the bit's in the wall, it's always turning. That's a really big deal because you can absolutely get one of these stuck in a wall. Ask me how I know that. So I ran the bit in really far. Now my, my screw, my Tapcon, is only an inch and three quarter. Like these are, these aren't terribly long. It's plenty long for what we're doing. But I ran the bit in like twice as long. And the reason why is if something goes wrong, the one thing, like there's a lot involved in this that you can't control. So control all the things you can. And by having it really deep, any shit left in the hole is going to blow away to the back or blow out clear, but I want to have room to clear that hole out. And the wall's like eight, ten inches thick, so what the hell do I care if I go in five? So, yeah. Then, this is the messy part. I want to put the... Can I do that for a short one? Maybe. I don't know. Let's try it with the long one. So put your little... When you buy cans of this, the little red tubes come taped to the side. You want the tube. Do not just stick the tube in the hole and it'll give her what for. Get a shot back.
See, it doesn't take a lot, but if you do that, you don't get the big plume of silicosis shooting out of the wall to fuck you up. So that's how you make the hole. You do that process, now everything's clean, everything's nice, and I know when I run my tap count in that hole, it's not gonna bind up with the tiny powder because if you leave all the powder in the hole, the tap count won't go in all the way. You'll, you'll have this, it's a pain in the ass. So clean out your hole really good and it'll work better. So knowing all that, here's how it's done at speed. See, now when you see a guy, like, people, people talk shit about guys in the trades and that, and... <laughs> people talk shit about guys in the trades and that, but when you see a guy running a hammer drill and he actually knows what the hell he's doing. He's got a lot going on in his head. Like this is, you gotta be smart to do this stuff. Also, if you noticed, if you, I don't know if the camera caught it, but if you look really close, you might see it. When I vacuumed out the second hole, the dirt came out a different color than the first hole. This came out um, just concrete color, the, the white gray color. This came out brown um, because when I was in there, and you could probably hear it in the saw, I, I hit a rock or something. And that's a technical term, rock or something. If you read the side of an MRE, it'll actually say rock or something. So that's, that's where they come from for MRE use. That's your, that's your rock or something. They come from holes in basement walls. So we got two tap cons. We got our box. Put your thing in there and it'll, it'll kind of stick. It's kind of a weedly magnet, but it's good enough. I like to run this through the hole I'm shooting through. Now I'm kind of tight in the box here, but I might be all right. Okay, and we're gonna hold this where we want it, and we're gonna watch our level and make sure we're level and good. And I'm gonna run that almost all the way down. Then I'm gonna grab a second one and get it in the hole. If you watch the robot series, you know about the bolt mitt rules. Get all your bolts in the holes before you tighten them all down. Be really careful tightening those down. These, like, people talk shit about the M12 tools because they're small, they're powerful. This will absolutely quite readily snap off those tap cons. So you don't want to like, and no, once it touches, you're done. You're there, it's as tight as it's gonna get. So just hold your level. And you're down, you're done, you're good. You can stand on that and it'll hold your weight. Okay, I can stand on that and it'll hold my weight, but I'm an anorexic little shit, so there you go. That's our first box, done. You've now hung a box on the wall, congratulations. So now we're gonna do that two more times. This is an easy run, we only got three boxes. So the first thing we need is we gotta put a hole in here for a three quarter conduit. Now our three quarter holes, because I put it in with my ground lug at the top right, I've got two three quarter holes right out here along the bottom. So we're gonna knock those out. Now to do knockouts, and these are cool. I love knockouts. This is just a clever idea. So let's dig in and get a real good look at knockouts. Okay, so see this thing right here? This is actually a die stamped cut in this box. And the cut goes all the way through, except for just on a couple points. Right here, you can see where it doesn't quite go all the way through, right on the other side over here and back here, I think there's another one. But the rest of these are actually stamped right out. And this is called a knockout. And what it does is you need the box to be structurally intact enough to keep your finger poking from happening. Okay, you can't, you can't stick your finger in there and if you're a mouse, you can't get in there. And that's, that's actually a big part of this is vermin control. Um, but it's, it's a safety thing. It keeps the box intact to keep sparky electrical things on the inside and delicate living things on the outside. However, 
you frequently, you know, the, the purpose of this box is to be able to run things in or out of it. So there's a million ways to attach stuff to this for various types of conduit and things like that. And you need a way in the field to be able to put a hole here. Now, if it was just a metal box, you'd have to drill the hole and deburr it and all that. It's a pain in the ass. So here's how this works in the real world. You touch it with your screwdriver and you grab your electrician's hammer and you smack it. And you can see the little tab bent in. See this right here? And they're, they're not, they're not like you can just push it with your finger and break it off sometimes. Um, so that gives us a one half inch conduit hole. It's not exactly a half inch. If you use a half inch drill bit, you won't be able to fit a half inch conduit through the hole. But if we were running something like this that uses a half inch, that'll just snap right in there. I am not going to click that in there because once these go in, they're a bitch to get out. But this is for a MC, armor light. So if we wanted to run half inch armor light, we're done. Now we need to go a size bigger because we got to fit this in there and that's too big for the hole. So you can see on there, there's that second ring. That's the three quarter inch hole. And now we're going to pop that out. Now you can lever this from this side and do it like that. I'm going to see if I can smack it from the inside so you can see everything articulated and moving. Let me see if I can do that. There. And now you can just hook this with your hammer. Give that a little bend and a wiggle and it comes right off. And now you have a clean burr free hole that you can mount your Gazenta into. That's how a knockout works. So this is our Gazenta. We have a three quarter inch fitting here and we're going to take the ring off the end. Now you'll notice the ring, the little teeth go towards the bell here. They go towards the housing. That's important. The teeth have to go in the right direction. Now the way I do this is you have an axis that you want this screw to end up on. I want the screw to end up straight out because if I put the screw straight up and I'm up against the wall, it's going to suck getting a screwdriver on there with my hand. I'm going to smack my knuckles. So I want this straight out so it's nice and easy to get to. Now this tightens in this direction. So I'm going to put this in straight down so that I get it snug and then I give it that last quarter turn to get it tight and I end up here. So you got to think ahead. You got to put this on down and then turn it up to face you. So this just goes together like this, making sure you have your ring on the right orientation. Spin that down and get it tight with your fingers and then bring it up. And now it's all nice and tight and it's good and it's happy. Now, you may not get this to bite your first time. I just had to fight that like three times to get around there. But you'll get it. Keep at it. They make a special little hooky wrench to do this. And I own them, but I didn't include it in this because the average home gamer isn't going to go out and buy a pair of those. But if you're um, a, uh, an apprentice electrician or something like that, it's a handy thing to have. So now you've got your first fitting in. It's good, it's secure, and you want this tight. If that ring isn't tight, you gotta, you gotta get it tight. You may have to do this a few times, but you gotta get that tight because this establishes a mechanical ground. This is actually an electrical bond. So it's a big deal that you get that right. If you have trouble getting this ring tight, the, you gotta balance two things. You wanna get the ring tight and you wanna keep the, the screw where you want it. So a way to tighten this if you don't have the fancy little wrench, you stick a screwdriver up against one edge of it and you smack it with your hammer and you can move that's how you can tighten and loosen these rings so if you ever have to change out a box or something like that these they're called bang rings and they move if you want to tighten it you're going this way so if you want to move it you put your screwdriver on it with the strike end and you just smack it and it'll move a little bit every time like it'll tighten down and now that's really fucking tight Make sure you've got your screw in the thing. You're going to need this later and sometimes they fall out. So when you buy these, every time you pull one out of the box, make sure you got a screw to go with it or you're fucked without it later. All right, now that we've seen it done one slow, let's do it once at speed and we'll just install a conduit fitting in the side. I got my fitting. 
I got my hammer. I got my strikable screwdriver. That's all you need for this. Here's how fast you, you'll do it like once you don't have to think through every step. Now we're on the other side of the box, so we're gonna be up there and then spin it down towards us. Done. That's it, that's all there is to it. You now know how to hang a box and install fittings. So the next step is we're gonna measure and cut some pipe. All right, so you'll notice here on our fitting that this has the bell right there, that bell does two things. One, the outside of the bell makes the fitting not go any further into the box. It gives a backstop for the bang ring. On the inside, this is shrunk down. We can, we can get a good look here. This is, like, this is all forged together or formed or pressed or something. And inside, it necks down just a little bit right at that point. Okay, right where the threads start at the back of the bell, this necks in so that this can fit inside the box, but it keeps the conduit from sliding through. It gives a positive end stop to the conduit. And that is our measurement point. So we can measure pretty much right up to the edge of the box, but we're gonna lose a little tiny bit, like, like an eighth of an inch. So the conduit doesn't engage to the screw until we're way the hell out here. So as long as the end of our conduit is somewhere in here, we're okay. You wanna be up as close as possible, but there's a reason this exists, and it has to do with uh, getting conduit to go into places where the boxes are already mounted. Now, we were smart, and we only mounted one box before we started cutting conduit, but that just gives you a reference point for where to work off of. Between two boxes, the way I do it is I measure box to box, like the, the outside of the box to the outside of the next box, and then just take off a quarter inch. All right, so we know we're gonna want this box to end up right here, and we know our box is four inches. So if I just measure off of that box straight down, I get 57 and three quarter. And I know if I subtract four inches from that, I'm gonna get 53 and three quarter inches. And I'm gonna take off an inch from that and it gives me 53 and a half. I'm gonna be generous and say 53 and a fat half. So that's, that's 53 and 5 eighths. Um, so we're gonna go to 53 and a fat half. Now that I've done all that, especially since there was math in that measurement, I'm gonna check it again. So let's be really sure. We got 57 and three quarter to the line here. We'll put our box in, because you, you've got the box, use it. So with my box there, that's gonna take me down to, hey look, it's about 53 and three quarter. So I'm gonna take a little bit off of that and I'm gonna cut 53 and a really fat half. Yeah, 53 and a fat half, and it'll be all right. So this is a tubing cutter. They are glorious, they're awesome. This is a DZ, DSZH tubing cutter. I don't know anything about them. <laughs> The way it works is you actuate this wheel on the bottom of the handle and it there's a screw drive and it moves this in against these rollers. Now this one has six rollers. There's, they're basically just bearings mounted on a shaft and there's two sets of them and then this spins too. This wheel in the middle is a cutting wheel. It's not razor sharp, but it's sharp enough. And the idea is this displaces the conduit or tubing. You can cut copper pipe with this as well. Um, and it creates a groove that'll eventually go all the way through. So we're gonna open that way up like that. And then every time we go, we're gonna put this on the pipe. And we're gonna tuck the pipe up into here. Let's grab a representative example with our conduit fitting. We're gonna put our pipe in like that. And then we're gonna bring this down, okay? And that's how these work and just, just fingertip pressure up against that for now because I don't actually wanna cut my fitting. But you spin this around the pipe. Now when you spin it around the pipe, the, the cutty side leads. 
you go around the pipe in this direction. You go all the way around, and then you give this a little turn. And you go all the way around, and you give this a turn. And, and that's how it works. Now, how much you turn this is like a quarter, maybe a half. This is an art form, and everybody who does it is going to have different opinions. Watch the fucking comments go nuts about how there's some dudes who like crank this fucker down ten times and go around once and rawr, and then they have a burr shitty edge. And then there's guys that only go like almost all the way through the pipe, and then they snap the pipe off, and you get a you get a nice clean edge if you do it that way. Usually, if you know what you're doing, I'm not that good. Um, I tend to go pretty much all the way. Now the way I do this, yours will be different. The way I do this is I go around a couple times, like two, three times, and then give it, I don't know, about a third, maybe a half of a turn, and then go around about three more times. I do not do this quickly. I do not do this for a living. I'm only a YouTube certified master electrician, which isn't a real thing, by the way. It's just cool on the patch. but. You will do this your way and you will find what works for you. I do it very slowly and very patiently because if I do that, I get a cleaner edge. And deburring is a pain in the ass. And we're going to teach you how to do that too. But that's how I do it. So here, I'll, I'll show you how it's done. So the first thing you're gonna do is mark her pipe. All right, so we've measured our pipe and we've got our cutter wheel lined up with the line and then just bring this down finger tight. Okay, and then give it, I don't know, half a turn come all the way around and as you go you'll see it leaves a line on the pipe and we're just going to keep going around a couple times and always have the cutter wheel in the direction of travel you don't want to have these leading it'll screw it up so and then given our turn that was about a third of a turn now at this point get that end low because well this is going to be awkward because I got to show this on camera but at some point, the end of the pipe's just gonna break. Like, it's gonna, it's just gonna come right off. And when you're doing this for real, you wanna, you wanna be ready to catch it and stuff. I got a full 10 foot length here, trying to hold it for camera. It's hard, that's why I don't do porn. All right, we just run that around, give it a twist, run it around, and you can, you can twist it while you run it. I'm just doing it slow so you can see it on camera. Twist. Now, there's a lot of guys that won't go all the way through. See, and it just snapped right there because it leaves a bit of a burr. And how bad of a burr it leaves is how fucking intense you are on cranking it down. You can also, if you crank it too tight, you'll warp this, you'll crush the pipe out of round. Don't do that. It sucks, because you can really fuck it up. Um, so we've got that. Now we get to learn about another tool. Oh, uh, yeah. This is a conduit reamer. Also does a couple other things, but mainly it's a conduit reamer. You notice the symbol on the end will be a circle with a line. And it has, on this end, that's a screwdriver for doing um, the, the screws on the conduit boxes. Like that. These hooks here actually ream the burr on the end of the pipe. And these bells expand the inside of the pipe to the proper diameter. So you got a half inch one here, a three quarter inch here. And the big one's probably one inch, but I've never used it. I 99.9% .9 of the conduit I run is half and three quarter. The big stuff, I just haven't done it when using this tool. So that's a conduit reamer, and here's how to use it. So this really couldn't be simpler. You take the tool, you put it in the end of the pipe, and you're gonna hook the little thing over the edge, push down hard, and twist. So, and, and you're just gonna grab the pipe in one hand, grab the reamer in the other hand, and I like to hook a leg around it because things will move and then just
It may, you may feel it hang up. That's okay. It means you've actually caught a ream or caught a burr. So just go the other way around. And you go back and forth a couple times and just clean it up. And you should be able to run your finger across the top and not cut your finger. If you do this, if you go like that and get stitches, you got burrs on it. Other end should be fine because that's a mill end. This is from the factory. So stick the thing in. Yep, we've got, we're not compressed down or anything because they can get crushed in handling. And we're good there. We now have a good piece of conduit. Now we're going to test fit it. And we'll put that there. Grab another box. Yep, everything lines up good. So, now we get to knock out another box. So we've got another box. Now this one is going to be a little different because we want to do our knockout and install the gazenta and get everything all fitted together before we actually screw it to the wall. And this way we can, we don't have to fight the conduit because once, especially on a short run like this, a short straight run with no bends, once we put this up there, um, it'd be held to get the conduit in position. So you got to think step by step ahead of what you're going to be doing. And for here, we know I like it up in top, right? We're going to knock out this hole. So let's do that. All right. So we're going to knock out our three quarter inch hole and this box is on the end. So we've got it oriented right. It's going to be that hole and we only need to knock out one. There's our hole. So we grab a fitting. Get it tight. Ah, there, beautiful. Our box is ready to go. So here you got a couple different level things to maintain. We're gonna dry fit everything. Oh my God, look at that. It's perfect. I have fucking mad skills. All right, so we want our box to be level and we want our conduit to be level. So. I'm going to line it to the line on the wall and just check it. And we're fucking perfect. So we don't have to worry about this as long as our box is on the line up top and that's there. So now all we care about is our roll axis, which is good there. So we're going to draw some dots. Okay, so now we got that all situated, we can make some holes.
So now I'm going to just gently set this in here in just the top hole. And I'm only just barely putting that in there because what I need to sight is my anchor points. I need to, this piece of conduit has to actually, you have to anchor the conduit to the wall. And for this one, we're gonna need two anchors and we're gonna put one within 12 inches of the box. So we're gonna put it about here and we're gonna put one within 12 inches of this box about here. So we'll have two anchors on it. And what we need to do is mark where our anchors are gonna go. So we're gonna come out, let's make them nice and uniform so they look good. We'll come out six inches from our box and we're going to put an anchor here and we're going to make a dot on the wall directly behind the pipe. Like on the center line of the back of the pipe. And I'm going to put a dot with a little line on it so it's easy to spot, but I know I'm six inches out so that'll be easy to find later. And then we go six inches out on this side and we get right behind our pipe. A little dot on the wall. And now that we've got our dots, we can take this off. That's why we just barely put that on there. And then we can set this down for a minute. So now for our next friend. This is a conduit anchor. Now there's a lot of different types. There's one hole straps, two hole straps, and all kinds of stuff like that. This is the kind I'm using today. You can see it's sized for three quarter inch conduit. Okay. And the way it works is you take the screw out at the top. So we'll take our screw out. Now there is no nut on this screw. Some of them have nuts. These ones don't. This is actually a machined thread in here and you spread this out and you anchor that to the wall. You put your conduit in, you squeeze it back together, you run the screw through and the screw threads into the side. Okay. Look up your code for how often you need one of these and where you need them at. Because there's going to be rules for how far along the conduit you need, how far from each enclosure, like there's, there's rules to this and you got to follow them. So, and you can find that in the code book, nothing to it, but they vary for, uh, there's, man, there's so many different exceptions and variations and it changes every few years. And I'm just going to say, you check the code. I am not a licensed electrician. I'm a YouTube certified master electrician. I didn't even have to send off to Battle Creek, Michigan to get that. So here's how we set a wall anchor. Some of this may look familiar to you. Hit a rock or something in there. Now, which way you put your screws is up to you. I'm going to put it for this one top down like that because if I had to put it screw up, well, I screw up enough. And if you did that here, you'd screw up hard because you play hell getting a screwdriver on the damn thing coming from below. So we're going to put our screws top down. It's in. That's all there is to it. Now let's do the same thing over on the other one. 
All right, now we put the whole thing together and we'll have our conduit run from one box to the next. We just line everything right up, put it in our anchors, get that on the wall, and you're juggling 10 different things all at once. So, this is what you care about at this moment in your life. The screws in the hole, the conduits in the anchors, you know those are level, you know they're right, so trust that. Get the thing in just a little bit for your first screw. Grab your second screw and find the right hole. We're level, we're good, we're on. You can squeeze these together and you're good. And you just screw everything together. So we got all that together and then we just put in our clamps. And you just tighten this down. It ain't rocket science. Now, if, if you care, and you should care, care. Align your screw head horizontal to your conduit. And that's it, you got, the whole thing is rigid and secure and on the wall and good and I love it. Everything's level and plumb and square and true and good. And that is everything you need to know to run conduit on a wall. Like you know how to hang a box, you know how to attach a conduit, you know how to set your anchors. It's not hard. There's a million little tiny steps. And if you watch this video three times, you'll probably pick out new stuff every time. But you'll get better at this as you do it. It really takes practice. You just do it over and over and over and over again. But that's the basics of how to hang the box on the wall. And now you got that. So we're gonna be back in the next video on this where we talk about putting the wire in the box and how to do that. But for this one, You've got pretty much everything you need to know. I'm going to finish out this run. I've got to hang the other box, and I'm not going to take you through step-by-step step through all that because it took me like two hours to do this, and I'm going to do the other part in 10 minutes. But, <laughs> but I'll show you what it looks like at the end. Okay? Here we go. So that's the basics of it. You now know all the fundamentals, like day one super beginner basics of how to hang conduit on a wall. There's a million other things to know. It was like we didn't have to even bend pipe. Like this is super easy. But if you're just doing this, like if you're a home gamer, you're just doing this on your workbench or something like that. This is a huge part of what you need to know. You need to know like how to set anchors, how to locate boxes, and how knockouts work, bang rings, stuff like that. There's a million little things in this video. I might even cut this up into a series and make this a bunch of little videos, but you're there. That's step one. So when we come back with our next video, we're going to start learning about grommet rings and how to put wire in there and what wire goes where and how to do an outlet and all that basic stuff. But if you're this far, you now at least have something that looks cool over your workbench. It's a start. Thank you guys for hanging out. Thank you for watching today. Thank you for supporting me on Patreon and help me do all this stuff. I am by no means a licensed electrician. I'm not even a licensed dog catcher. I'm just a guy who reads a lot of books and likes to make cool shit and put it on the internet. So don't think that watching this, you can go out and do this for a living. But if you're a kid who's just starting out, if you're making projects and things like that, a lot of the stuff I used here will apply to you. And this is how people do it out in the real world. So it's a start, at least. I don't know. There's going to be like 5,000 real electricians that watch this and rip me apart. And that's fine. But this is how I do it, and it works for me. 
If I screwed it up, if I violated code, if I did anything like that, by all means, comment below and let's all learn together on how to do it better. Because I like learning stuff and there's a million really smart guys that watch these videos and you know stuff that I haven't even begun to figure out yet. And I do appreciate your help and I do appreciate your comments and I appreciate you helping me teach a million other people how to do it better. So thank you. You guys have fun. As always, we'll see you next time.